In this video, we're going to dive into the world of e-commerce email marketing with a view towards personalizing flows and campaigns with AI and machine learning. And we're going to do that using OpenAI and Langchain. I'm going to start off by giving you a brief overview of the AI opportunity in this space from a developer's perspective. Then I'm going to show you how to get started developing by setting up Klaviyo on Shopify and getting the relevant API key. This allows us to explore Klaviyo's API functionality and how we can manage customer properties which are essential when it comes to personalization. Finally, I'll show you how you can pass data from Klaviyo to Langchain and build simple personalized LLM chains just to get us warmed up for what's coming in the following videos. So Klaviyo is the most widely used email service provider for e-commerce. It's used by hundreds of thousands of e-commerce stores worldwide. And it's not only an email service provider, it's now morphing into a full customer data platform. A customer data platform consolidates various data sources into a unified customer view for marketing purposes. It enables targeted communication across multiple channels, including paid media channels such as Google Ads and Meta. And the key word here is targeted communication, because that is what we can scale with AI and machine learning. We can do that by creating audiences and content for those audiences more efficiently and in a way that optimizes ROI. And that is the main challenge we're going to focus on in this video and in the following tutorials. So I'm going to be using Klaviyo with Shopify. So if you don't already have a Shopify developer account, go to shopify.dev and sign up. Once you have a developer account, you can create development stores for testing out your applications. I'm not going to cover how to set up development stores as there are already great tutorials on that. I'm going to put a link to this Shopify tutorial below this video. So I have a development store here called Running Customer with some basic products. And this is the store I'm going to be using with Klaviyo. It's already connected to Klaviyo. I'll show you in a bit how we connect the store to Klaviyo. We have a few products in the store. I'm also going to show you in a bit how we populate the store with the sample data. So from the admin of the development store, if I push apps, you can see that I already have Klaviyo installed. But if you're setting up a fresh development store, you won't have Klaviyo installed. So you go to the app store, apps.shopify.com, and you find Klaviyo, and then you simply click install. Here it says open app because it's already installed. But if you don't have the app, then it will say install app. And it's basically just a one-click install. You're also going to need simple sample data. So search for that in the app store, and you will use that app to populate your development store with testing data. And of course, you can also do that in other ways, for instance, using the API, but using simple sample data is pretty easy. But once you have some sample data and you have installed Klaviyo and signed up for a free account at Klaviyo, you're ready to go. Here we have the Klaviyo main dashboard. Let me just quickly walk you through Klaviyo. So the home page is going to give you an overview of the business performance is the main dashboard. Then we have campaigns. And campaigns are essentially one-time broadcasts of a message to an email list. Think like Friday or Christmas campaigns. Then we have flows. Flows are a series of messages that are sent out to an email list, often triggered by an event. This could be a post-purchase flow. So you send a series of emails to a customer that has bought once from you. And both campaigns and flows can be personalized, or the messages within campaigns and flows can be personalized. Then we have profiles under audiences. And profiles are essentially what it says is a profile of a customer or a lead. And these profiles are either being created and updated through the Shopify integration or directly by Klaviyo via the JavaScript snippet that's injected in the storefront HTML. The most important thing to note here from a personalization perspective is the custom properties section. Custom properties are tags that we can add to the customer and use in the templates in order to target the communication towards the customer. We also, of course, have an ID that we could use to fetch or update information about the customer. And then there will often be some campaign or UTM parameter information on the profile as well. So let's move on to metrics, which can be found under analytics. So metrics represent actions. So we have a metric called checkout started, canceled order, fulfilled order, and so on. And events in Klaviyo terminology are timestamped occurrences of a given metric. And these events or metrics are used to trigger flows. But we can also fetch data for a given metric related to a given customer and use that data for personalization. Let's move on to the concept of a template before I show you how the integration works. 
So a template is simply a pre-populated HTML file that lets you set up flows and campaigns efficiently. And the cool thing about a template is that we can use the custom properties we just saw with a template syntax to tailor the messaging to individual customers. When we get to the campaign engineering part of the series, I'm going to show you how this syntax works. Before we get to the API part, let me just demonstrate how the integration works and what happens when a customer makes an order. So I'm going to head over to the development store, runningcustomer.myshopify.com, and I'm going to make an order. Let's buy the Adidas Classic Backpack. I'm going to click Buy Now. Then I'm just going to fill out this contact information. And for everything I'm doing here, I'm using my own domain, rabbitpromotion.com, for the emails because I want to be able to test sending the flows and campaigns. Let me just quickly fill this out. The name, John Doe. And I'm just going to put in some random stuff for the address. And remember, you need to activate the test payment system on the development store in order to be able to test orders. So filling out the card details to simulate a successful transaction, and then we hit the Pay Now button. So once the transaction has been made, we can head over to Klaviyo and see that we actually now have a new profile, John Doe. I'm just going to click on the profile, and then I'm going to go copy the profile ID because we're going to need that when we fetch data with the Klaviyo API. The Klaviyo API is well documented and it's really easy to get started. The documentation is found on developers.klaviyo.com. There's also a thin Python wrapper around the API and there's a GitHub page for that. So if you want to use the Python wrapper, you simply run pip install Klaviyo API. But the first thing we're going to need to get started is an API key. So in the Klaviyo admin, you'll go down to the lower left corner and select integrations. And there you'll be able to click developer tools. And this is where you'll be able to create and manage your API keys. So I have created a private key here, and I'm going to copy that key and put the key in an environment file. So let's head over to the Colab notebook that I've prepared. For this video, we're only going to need four libraries. We need python.env to read the environment file, Langchain, OpenAI, and the Klaviyo API. Then I will load the environment file. I will import the Python wrapper to the Klaviyo API, and I'll instantiate that wrapper with the Klaviyo API key. And note that using environment files in a Colab notebook is really easy. You just click the folder icon on the left, and that's where you upload the file. You'll be able to see the .env file if you click the I. And now we are ready to communicate with the API. So the first thing we can do is to use the metrics endpoint to fetch some metrics from the account. And in this request, I'm not specifying any fields or using any filter. And here we see a selection of the metrics in the account. We have unsubscribed, open email, and fulfilled order. Of course, we have a lot more metrics than this. So the metrics are mostly interesting in the context of a customer profile. So let me fetch some profile information. And I'm going to use a filter in this request. So when we make a request to get profiles or metrics, we can put in a filter that fetches only the profiles of the metrics that have been updated between two dates. And in this specific request, I'm fetching a single profile. And it's important to note that the custom properties are part of the response. You can control which fields you want to be part of the response. In this case, I'm just returning everything there is to know about the customer. So now let's try to fetch some information about John Doe, the profile we just created with the order we made through Shopify. And to get the information, we'll call the profiles endpoint with the ID we copied from Klaviyo. And we see that we have all the information that we filled out when we created the order in Shopify. And we can add properties by updating the profile. And we can also do that through the API. So we have a few custom properties here. Let me just show you how you add or update those. And doing that is pretty easy. We define a payload, which is just a dictionary. It needs to contain the type, which in this case is profile, an ID, which is the ID of John Doe, and then the attributes. And within attributes, we have the properties that we want to add or update. I'm going to add a recommended incentive 
a CLV value, churn risk, and upsells propensity. And then we just use the update profile method with the ID and the payload. And this will update the customer profile in Clavio and it will return the updated profile information. And we see that we now have the properties that we added in the payload. And if we head over to Clavio to the profile of John Doe, we see that we now have the new properties on the custom properties section. As I mentioned earlier, events are timestamped occurrences of a given metric, and we can fetch all the events that are related to a specific customer. In this case, I'm fetching all the events that are related to John Doe. And here we see the checkout started event that was created when I ordered the Editor's backpack. And like we did with the profile, you can put in filters that will only extract events related to certain metrics. So you can already see now that this data is going to be relevant when we want to communicate with customers using LLMs. And we want to do that in a smart and robust way. But a first naive approach would be to fetch this data from the API and feed it to an LLM chain and see what we get. And for that, I've created a customer data function that simply fetches profile information for a given customer ID and purchase events or data about purchases for that given customer. And then I create a string out of that data so that we can feed it to an LLM chain. And to do that, I'm going to import prompt template, chat, open my eye, and LLM chain from the LangChain library. And I'm just going to ask the language model to write a two line introduction to an email with a hook from team running customer to a customer with a given set of properties. And then I'm going to feed the language model the data that we extracted from Clavio. And if you run this, we get a short introduction. And there are two things I want you to note. So first of all, the language model is picking up on the recommended incentive that we have in the data. So it is recommending a special gift to John because that was what we had in the custom properties. And this is very important because it allows us to merge the large language modeling with machine learning. So machine learning would be driving the recommendations and the large language models will be consuming those recommendations and communicating with the customer. The other thing I want you to note is that the language model says, Dear John, we noticed you might be interested in our latest deals. Well, this is true, but it's not really optimal. That's not how you want the language model to communicate with the customer. So there's a need for some prompt engineering telling the language model how it should use the customer data and what it should say and not say. In the following videos, we're going to extend this to create a personalization loop using large language modeling and combining that with principles from causal inference and machine learning. This allows us to scale personalized communication in the most profitable way using an email service provider like Clavio. If you want to follow along for this, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.